Granny used to tell me all the time Sparks when feet and preparation combine The road been right here all this time But you gotta look with more than your eyes And the small axe Jesse Royal representing for I Just Star Mindset Rich forever Blessed love, pleasant, good evening, good afternoon. Warm welcome, Mindset Program. I just am your host. And I want to greet the item in the divine name of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Il Selassie I, Empress Men in the First, Holy Emmanuel I, King Selassie I, Ja, Rastafari. One more day above ground, beautiful viewers and subscribers, as the item knows that life is our ultimate position. Not no greater than life, you know, no matter where the item say a go on. Zane. So today we have a special guest on the program. Um, he's not a stranger to the program also. Zane um, is a Rastafari virgin. Zane and we are going to hold a Rastafari reasoning. Zane, the Brodjian um, is Chief Aya Congo I, Zane of the Rastafari Sovereign Indigenous Order and Nation, also the President of the HOAMG OM. Holistic, organic, agricultural, and medical ganja cooperative updating the Rastafari. Yeah, so today we are going to update ones and ones around the world. Zane about what is taking place um, in Jamaica, St. Catherine, to be specific, Pinnacle. Zane, and um, yeah, we have. I a Congo I on the line and Moafi introduced the Virgin to the Mindset program. Blessed love honorable. Give thanks, give thanks, my brother. Hope everyone can hear I. Yeah. Give thanks for the moment. Yes, I a Congo. Great for your day advice and you know it's great to have the eye on the platform also again. Yeah man, manners and respect, my brother. How do I been doing? Brethren, excellent. I can only continue to give thanks and praise to the Godhead, the Girl of Maui, Kid of Maui, Isla Selassie, and Empress Menin for the exemplary, what I call, yeah, model that they left of what are they, you know, left standing and gave I and I as the children to, you know, to follow, like EWF. Even the Ethiopian Orthodox, what I call it, Tawahudu Church, you know, these kind of things where His Majesty left for I and I is because they know that there is sovereignty and balance in a certain thing that will bring I and I full forward to I and I glory. So I give thanks for being a part of that time where it was I and I who prophesied as the ones who walked before of I and I time. So I'm glad to be here today to see what I spoke about millennia past. <laughs> this was going to be, and so uh, we give thanks for being here. You know, the ones who we prophesy. <laughs> Rastafari. Yes, 
Yes, my king, give thanks, man. It's an honor and a privilege, you know? Yes, far right. All right, um, we we'll just run through a little thing about the eye because I know the first time the eye was here, the eye never really give much information about the eye self. It's more about the issue at hand we were dealing with and we we'll just get straight into it still. But um, I know many people, many ones know of the eye and know the eye works and know what the eye stands for. Zane. Um, we have yes, so the, 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 the eye is the, the chief, Zin Rastafari, um, the president also of the, 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 the Rastafari sovereign well, said, indigenous. Yeah, yeah, well, I said rise on as a shot for one thing and home GC for the other, you know? Okay. Yeah, man. I thought not the, the long you know, acronyms and things, so. Rise on, which is the Rastafari Southern Indigenous Order and Nation, was uh, birthed or, uh, you know, rise up because of we saw a lack of that moving forward, that trajectory of moving forward of the movement mm-hmm. of Rastafari to actually go into what they call proper persona, that meaning holding your sovereign status and indigenous rights and you know, creating governmental structures from within. Not more like, say, only bingy priests and, you know, priests, but governmental structures that we're dealing with, institutions and things that would bring a unified collective economic balance as well as spiritual balance to the movement. But, but becoming more personalized and cliquish where 12 tribe out for them thing, Boba out for them thing, Bingy out for them thing, even the movement towards what would be called uh, the, the Rastafari Millennium Council yeah. was um, a good attempt at that, you know, all mansion. And um, we saw that certain things took place there to cause it to become a more, what you'd like call privatized entity and um, certain, you know, disillusionment and dissolving of unity took place again. So what I wanted to do was to really, you know, speak about I, yes, but to, to make sure that I include the real purpose, which was to update the family that is Rastafari, without any other name or title, just Rastafari, that there was a birthplace that can be considered, for instance, sovereignty is based upon land. Mm-hmm. Land. You have to have a land mass land. But it didn't really start from, let's say, the land under your foot. It started the fact that you were the land, that you had a land mass that had, you know, um, regions, your arms, your legs, and you governed this by your own governmentality. And you made this land what you want it to be. And so no one else had the right to govern this land. And so it started from your own personal knowledge of your own sovereignty that it went over into sovereigns in the region then making the land itself sovereign. And so, you know, that is something one have to grasp, that sovereignty is a personal adventure, like religion is a per- personal thing, His Majesty said. Mm-hmm. Sovereignty, you must learn how to be able to defend your own body, your own right, not to be juked by anyone or puked by anyone. So these are the things that rise on, um, we're supposed to be moving and is still moving towards bringing into the, the movement. But what we see is once you begin that, of course, you catch the fire to ones who have been asleep, who have been slouchy, and they begin to run ahead now. And, you know, they think it's a juxtaposing, but Rizon is just doing what they saw was lacking and continues to do it in the cleanest, purest, uh, non-aligned, you know, movement that we can. That means that we're not, we're not, we're not, no one don't own rise on outside of the rise on movement you see and so no one can claim it like being here claim it like bobo or claim it like 12 tribe it's for all rastafari like for instance 12 tribe used to give out their own id i think they still do i think the bobo shanti used to do the same thing so i was trying to get the naya bingi 
to deal with one that was more of a total Rastafari sovereignty ID. Instead of just individual, individual group or one identification that would ID every Rastaman as a Rastaman. Sovereign and indigenous under the nation of sovereign and indigenous and really calling together a sovereign indigenous Rastafari council that will deal with every Rastafari mansion and give them workshops, teaching them how to deal with their own sovereign rights and how to change this and, you know, bring this into reality, not just fear checking and paperwork alone, but um, living on lands that is, they, they claim as government and by your sovereignty and your indigenous rights claiming those lands, um, lands like Pinnacle that was taken out of one's hand based on sovereign rights. They have to be given and returned if the sovereign indigenous people made those claims to the U.S. Why? So because ones don't know their sovereign rights and it's written in the sovereign rights um, articles where ones can reclaim lands taken away from them as sovereign indigenous people. So since we came around to that topic, we can talk about the pinnacle topic and the fact that um, the pinnacle is what we would consider the sovereign birthplace of the Rastafari movement. And therefore that land where these Rastafaris lived and did commerce and economic is considered our sovereign earth plate. And so I and I, of course, was sad when we saw over the years the lack of development, you know, the argument, the separation, the struggle to move forward in unison collectively to make that sovereign heritage site benefit the Rastafari movement um, globally as a, a point and, and a beacon of our sovereignty. And so, so so that it was 500 acres and a lot of things went on to mm -hmm. where it came down to the point where we were, you know, being allotted lots as Rasta, inclusive, of course, of the Howell family. I wanted to, you know, hail up Catherine Howell, Empress Catherine Howell, her excellency for standing firm and wow, yeah, making the journey through this time, through the struggle, through the misunderstanding of whatever was going on to where it became a point where whatever was being uh, allotted to be considered a heritage site uh, objection came through the Rastafari Millennium Council mm -hmm. um, based on, you know, at first it was uh, on the amount of the lots and then it was basically on a clarification issue of whether this was going to be a heritage site for Rastafari are a monument. And basically they were saying as Rastafari, they tend to have a certain kind of a way of reasoning because they know it was there. When we heard of Orthodox, we said, uh, our Orthodox or something else and we didn't want to be involved with it and Orthodox. And then we heard of um, another name and um, EWF Federation and said that to life that you know so we know how lots of four over the years have done stuff like that and that was monument versus um being a heritage site and monument represented and heritage mean life and so the objection that was placed there the government gives the authority authority to any you know want to object a certain thing until it's really you know looked into on a certain level so the RMC's objection stop any moving forward of the pinnacle, um, you know, situation. <clears throat> One moment, uh, having a noise in the in the foreground here. Give one second. Yes, Bobo. Yeah, man, we know them things that go more wild, you know. Yeah. Yes, I. Yes, honorable family. So we have um. I Congo I um, with us today and you know the Virgin I give us a you know update on what is taking place with uh, Pinnacle you know Rastafari heritage site in um, Jamaica uh, St. Catherine to be specific 
Um, the Virgin did say something earlier still where I just want to ask a question, you know? I just want to ask this question because um, the Virgin said Pinnacle is the first Rastafari Rastafari um, where Rastafari started, you know, the whole movement. But is, is that uh, factual? You know, that that's how the thing actually started because based on, based on um, the knowledge that I have still, you know, I know most of the ones them started, most of, you know, the, the movement itself started in, in um, Kingston and at one point the Virgin them had to move now to, to, to St. Catherine. See, that is the overstanding. So, I just want to ask Aya Congo I, you know, if him could shed some light, you know, a little bit more light and, you know, uh, pinnacle being where Rastafari, the movement itself, started. Majesty. Aya Congo. Yes, I give thanks for the moment. When I say, you know, it's virgin in pinnacle, you know, I'm speaking of an economic nation type of a structure, you know, where, as I said, everything was actually their, their own, everything, basically, you know, um, similar to the Judah Coptic having their own everything, you know, so that's what I'm talking about when I speak about like the birthplace or the first place for Rastafari mm -hmm. on a level where we were in a collective nation setting, yeah? Yeah. So if you have another place like that before Pinnacle, then one can tell me about it. But that's what I know as a person who has been dealing with or studying the Rastafari tribe. We're not saying that the first Rastafari man name was at Pinnacle. But we know that Pinnacle was the first, what we don't call second men on that scale where we had our own, you know, liberty going on on that level. So that's what I think we're trying to say mm -hmm. um, on that level. No, no, no real, you know, big deal if somebody had a, another location or something in Kingston before. You know, that of course can be also written into the story. When we're talking about the scale and the work that was being put down, we can say that was Rastalan, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah, the first Rastalan, you know, upon a scale like that, and the development that took place there. Um, we know of other ones that did great works too, you know? I'm trying to remember this brethren name also established that kind of a communal, community liberty and, and setting and had great work on a bakery and everything also i'm trying to remember that brethren name he had gotten into some serious trouble though with the government later for trying to overthrow and stuff like that so um yeah um what i'm getting at though is with the pinnacle situation um that objection had kept the movement forward and the ability for even the jamaican government to really participate in a, in a certain way forward with any development and other things because the objection was there. What happened though is based on the fact that the RMC had privatized itself, a lot of the different mansions that was considered to be part of it that it would then be representing stepped away. And so that 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 governance over, you know, for instance when, you know, um the Coral Gardens thing was going on, of course, the, the Millennium Council wanted to oversee that, being that they were considered at one time the protectorate body that would be overseeing all mansions, you know, intellectual property rights. But based on the fact that, you know, all that began breaking down, it's like having the OAU, and then See. all these African countries start separating from it and loses its power. And oh, so, fire when right. privatized, I, I pray to you, my lord, because the background, the noise in the background, I saw on a way. So, hold on there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man, man, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Give thanks. Yes, fire right. So, continue, continue. We're, we're, yeah. 
Yeah, so basically, like I said, my brother, the pinnacle um, issue was very important to a lot of Rastafars across the world mm -hmm. of when that was going to be settled and dealt with, you know, because it still and was considered that that idea of the, the birthplace of Rastafari then. So with the government now recognizing that, you know, the RMC doesn't actually have the legal standing to say they are having an objection that they could actually stop this process from the, you know, from the Howell Foundation and mm -hmm. so forth to go through. Just as long as, of course, paperwork showed that it's in the best interest of the Rastafari movement, not so much a personal family matter in the sense of, you know, it's for the Howells but that it's a Rastafari heritage site with all respect to let Leonard um, P, you know, Howell and his daughter and his family and everybody gets all the love and respect they deserve. Rastafari have their heritage site on that first level and keep on expanding hopefully on different lots and acreages because there's still acreages up there available for expansion. Mm -hmm. So if this thing here keeps growing and growing in unison and amicably and there's no more objections and fighting and struggling we can get certain things done and, and and establish a great a great you know metropolis of rastafari on that level you know if we know what we're doing with the proper guidance and less you know ego and and fight fighting fighting infighting then you know um so that's where i'm at, I'm at right now we actually um, I was arbitrating between the how um, Sister Howell and the RMC to find out what their objection was and it was whether this was a heritage site or a monument. Mm -hmm. They wanted it to be clear that it would be a heritage site. We got that clarity. We're moving forward, I would say, here. We can call this a victory on the Rastafari side. Um, we give thanks that ones are, you know, uh, are, are, you know, in unison and, and having the ability to actually want to talk because, you know, there was a time when there was communication between ones and, you know, with this arbitration that we did, I think it helped to, you know, break the ice and hear what the other one has to say and these things. And we move forward, you know, we give thanks to what the, what the JNH is doing. Jamaica National Heritage Trust, as long as they keep their word and do what they say they're doing, then we will have a hand in the plan. And when I said we, of course, the Howell Foundation and the stakeholders and ones, in order to set that foundation the way it should be for a Rastafari heritage site, because so, you, you may ask, give the power to a bald head, you know? Yeah, you may ask the IFRI, how much control um rastafari people have um within this thing because i'm here there i speak about um uh stakeholders and 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 so on i guess they are also investors and 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 people like that how much control um does rastafari in jamaica um have on 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 this thing well, you know, from what I have learned from the sitting in that I did, mm -hmm. you know, I would say that the Rastafari will be considered the head of what is happening in decision making. Right. And therefore, the Rastafari should be ahead before decision makings begin, meaning get together and get these proposals and ideas that they need and want to put on the table forward. Because if one's a day with plans and things before you, and you're jitting around, skitting around, people are gonna move forward. So it is a movement, and therefore ones have to get into the game, get into the, the swing of things, and not think that things are just gonna fall in our lap, how we're born ganja and love kick back. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that there is going to be, of course, a, a opportunity of trillions here where ones are gonna want to move aggressively. Now, if you don't have the ability to, you know, deal with those kind of uh, movement people, then you will lose, right? And you will be invested out of the league. 
What you need is a plan ahead for what you saw as a vision for that place as a Rastafari. Therefore, the name and your sovereignty towards that begins to take precedence over any investor, anyone coming. If you know that, you begin to put forward a Rastafari plan, not your personal plan. Yeah. It's got to be a Rastafari heritage site plan. Mm -hmm. So it's got to include development for Rastafari, what it's shown. Remember, the heritage site is preservation. That is all the NHT is doing, preserving it. That means if it had wattle buildings, uh, to, they want to build those back. So it bring the old days. Okay, and what, what up there was while Rastas were living there. You see, so that's what they, they want to do as far as heritage preservation. It's up to the Rasta now to implement economics and ways to make that place a functioning heritage site, including, of course, the TPD Co., which is going to come there because they want to make some tourism of it. So you're going to have the TPD Co., which is a, right? The production development company, tourist mm -hmm. production development company is going to be there. And therefore, you though, as Rasta, sovereign and standing in, uh, with wisdom, you bring a think tank of intelligent Rastas to make these, you know, to make these decisions in the what you'd call the Pinnacle Planning Committee, where you would make sure that you plan what you want to see in Pinnacle and then work in tandem with what the government or other investors might want and you discuss if that can be or what can't be. But I'm sure, and I can tell you that, with the strength of I being around, you know there's going to be a strong voice for Rastafari among the people. Yes, I. Yeah, man. If that so, we're not take no breadcrumbs, we're not take no, no, you know, dark food in you know, this thing. The Empress Awel is still a living entity, strong and militant to stand for our, what her father's heritage was. And she's a Rastafari in the flesh, uh, Empress, living it. And so we give thanks for that voice of Rastafari uh, in her. And that means that she's defending the heritage of Rastafari in, in, de in defending this heritage site. So we are on the right path and therefore the ancestors as i said great things are happening for some people in the world i'm gonna ball and weep while rastafari uprise a long time with a ball and weep so the, the rise on is here bro <laughs> that's what i'm saying the, the rising is at is happening and all we have to do is make sure that you know his majesty said we already fought our armageddon we got to overstand that, you know, while the world is doing this and that, Rasta was always a separate, what would I call, uh, a renunciation movement, where we turned our back on society's liberty and accepting that culture mm. and had a different culture. And so if we were surviving all those years while rejected by society, why should we be running to aim to get back into society? No. We need to strengthen what kept us afloat, kept us independent, kept us living in the indigenous, you know, organic lifestyle, Aita lifestyle. We need to, you know, just strengthen that. And that's what being indigenous and sovereign is all about. You know, that's why I'm ever big up man like our ambassador, you know, at large, yeah, our cultural ambassador, man like Changa Changa. Yeah, who lives in his own clothing, the Mecco to all banana, you know, trash and everything else. The brethren is a genius. And this is what Rasta was about. Creating your own clothing, not trying to be anything like these people. Renunciation. But that has changed where it's all about, you know, being accepted and being a part of society. And the one will come play at one of them, them hotel or upon them ship. And we are the entertainment now when we were the revolutionary. So we turn entertainer instead of revolutionary. The revolution are done. Rastafari. Yes, sing and dance a party and have event. I really hope not. You know, that the revolution um not done and you know it it, it it's still going. But well um, if you listen to even man like Damien Marley, you know, mm -hmm. who's supposed to be like one of the peoples who are the dynasty of Rastafari, him and the Mali family. You hear that man talking about him wish the revolution would have done and it over and the struggle you know, for continue no more. Mm. If the struggle continue then, 
all them songs there, you know, hear them songs there. When yeah. Mali, his father said, the revolution is still going on and we have to fight the struggle. But him come now and I talk about him, get him rich, things nice. Him now I hear about no more struggle continue, brother. You see me? And we have to pay attention to these songs because these ones are telling us that they're no longer in the, in the struggle in with the I and I. Them rich, things it's good it. for them. You see me? So it's I and I must realize that if the, them ask me, so when the struggle is going to end? Because I say it's a good idea, some people. You have to think positive. You have to think like that, done with. And, you know, I said, well, you know, when the struggle stops, when the rapist is dislodged from our mother, when the rapist is no longer on top of our mother, either by me driving my machete and I'm head back, or my mother kicking him off. But they, as long as they're raping Mother Africa right now and forever, the struggle continues. There is no end to the struggle till the rapist is dislodged from our for mama. That me I say. Yeah, right. And um you know, I come across a a a a, a, a comment someone made on, on the platform recently, Zane, and basically what they were saying is like you can't really put your trust into um reggae entertainers and, and, and musicians when it when it comes to um upholding the standard, you know, of of Rastafari. You know what I mean? So, I guess based on what the I say now, probably, you know, we could, you know, use that as, as, as something. Because based on what we are say today, not for the ones them who are sing music and are do reggae and thing. No disrespect to no one, but some of the things them what we are say is, 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 you know, is, is nowhere near Rastafari. Is, 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 is nowhere near it. To I, it more look like as the ayah said, we are trying to fit in, or we are trying to appease, or, you know, we are trying to please people. You know what I mean? You know, oh, the, the, the original are the, 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 the things them that we used to do from the beginning. We see them slowly diminishing. You know what I mean? And we know that reggae artists is not... The the, 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 the the forefront of Rastafari, you know what I mean? Reggae artists is only a handful when when you look at the movement, you know, so we see enough of them as sell out really, enough of the ones them sell out when we start to hear and and see certain type of movement. You know what I mean? That is how ones classify most of these virgin, not all of them, but most of them. And sistering, you know? Yeah, I must not leave that out. But you say something that um I just want to, you know, ask the eye this. Why is it that um pinnacle is so important knowing that Rastafari as a movement and an order was always chanting and agitating towards going back to africa and you know if we're going back to africa we're going forward to africa why is it that something in jamaica should be so important mm-hmm. yes i well give me one second and i'll give my, my best uh, attempt at answering that mm-hmm. we must always remember you know that yeah. Marcus Garvey is the one that really pushed that old return to Africa thing. Mm-hmm. And he never said all Africans should return. He was speaking about those with skills that could go and help develop Africa. Mm-hmm. Right? Not everybody pile up with them bad habits and bad ways where them get from over the West without so frig up Africa even. So it wasn't that concept that ones want to push like, yeah, everybody should go Africa, number one. We were everywhere on this planet. This is our land, Jamaica. Tainos are Africa, are black people. This is our land before any slave trade and all that. Mm. So all of us don't have to pile up over every island and go nowhere. This is our property. The white men only came from the caves of Europe. So I think property and place that. Everywhere else is ours. People of melanin all over the planet. You go, we were there. And the white man, everywhere he went, he found us there. And every other people that went to every other place on the planet, they found us there. 
the first Chinese of the Shang Dynasty, the first Japanese of the Ainu Dynasty, the first European of the Gurmaldi. Everywhere you went, the first um, Americans of the Olmecs. Everywhere on the planet is Africans there first. So there's nowhere for us to pack up and go to. That's a big illusion. That's the next thing that transpired with like Marcus Garvey and others where people in the Americas who believed and understood that they were there before an enslavement thing took on and came in with Columbus idea and all that, that they were there living. That was their land. And then when Marcus Garvey came to America preaching that black people should all leave these countries and go to Africa, mm -hmm. according to what people thought that that was his, 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 his gospel. When I'm explaining, he was speaking about those that could do some benefits there, not yeah. everyone. But yeah, at yeah. the same time, what he said, it irritated a lot of those indigenous Africans that were in America, they didn't like Garvey, a lot of them, but, but a lot of black people don't know that part of the story, mm. that there was the resistance against Garvey saying that these people who knew their ancestors were still in America long before no white slavery garbage, that they themselves didn't feel like Garvey was, you know, speaking to them. And therefore, there was a resistance there. And so we want to get deep into these things when we're talking about how these things go with people going back to where remember the atlantic ocean was the ethiopic ocean yes. remember ethiopia was the indus kush all the way into india so when we talk about where we're going to where are we really going to these are our lands hmm. see so we must stop that and realize that a reparation a repatriation first of all a repatriation should be about from the spirit yeah, you gotta come from the out of out of the Babylonian system and mind state first, or you're not gonna wet. You'll take you will take the ghosts and the demons of of, of of the West into Africa and mash it up and let them loose over there like you hear going on right now. So that is the problem. It's a reparation of the spirit from the corrupt colonial concepts forward to your indigenous sovereign culture and traditions and then you're talking about you're ready for going to wear for go boy yeah develop no africa and we as rasta can't deal with getting jamaica on the i and i leadership and rulership are we going to go to big big africa and try it out that's why in the shashamani this and that one yes i mean and if they did a follow what the king did establish as the ewf and not some rasta ish takeover of the shashamani land grant many of the Beaten where Rasta get them wouldn't get. You see me? A man would not stick to the fact that is his majesty is the king of kings and not try to push everybody else up in front of him and all kind of look up. You know, schism we hear going on. Then it, it, they wouldn't be getting flogging left and right. You hear this man will lose this debt over here, so gunshot this so uh, uh, them I take with scotch paws. Yo, beer beaten, bobo, bingy, everybody I get beaten because what? Disobedience. The Ethiopian World Federation, His Majesty, bring come, man. So how come Allah will not deal with that? Eh? Is what? We don't realize where I go on. That right there. Remember, the Moors have a federation. That's why they're so powerful. They're trading amongst themselves. We need that as Rastafari. The Ethiopian World Federation gives us that opportunity, that umbrella. You know, we need to overstand sovereignty and know what we're dealing with. His Majesty gave us those sovereign umbrellas, man, so we can you know we can be protected but we're not in those organizations and we're not using those organizations like okay when i join the ethiopian world federation i have a right to change my name you know everything under that sovereign umbrella but people don't even know that you see that so, <laughs> so me, you know same thing with the e yeah yeah let me ask the eye this far right because um Everything where the eye does say is correct. Zin, I mean, I've got dispute. I try to dispute what the eye is saying. Zin, because I know it's correct. All right. Um, when I look on Bobo Shanti you now, as um, mm -hmm. one, of, one of the pillars in the movement of Rastafari, and, you know, Bobo Shanti, um, Prince Emmanuel, is also one who agitate towards um, black people should return back to 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 Africa. Zane, 
Oh, 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 you see, oh, oh, you see that, um, that, you know, we, 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 we still agitating to going back to Africa and, you know, we, 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 we should be paid also. Zin, based, based on what the eye is saying, you know, and Bobo is an organization where, where, where say it stand um, above all other organization. Zin, but I, I personally say that we should be working with the EWF, Zin, as as part of you know the land grant and and so on. But apart from that, oh 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 oh, you really say. Um, Bobo Shanti in that stance with the agitate, agitation um, for repatriation? Well, you know, my brother, let me put it like this. You see, if there was no, no, for instance, when I say I don't see the, 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 the pushing forward for the sovereign indigenous uh, movement in the Rastafari movement, and the, I can see that. Mm -hmm. that I can realize that yeah true whenever I really I step up on that we more step up and get done on these things so when we can see that there was a gap and then this group like rise on fills it in right we can understand there was the necessity because like we say invention necessity is the mother of invention yeah. so when we're going to deal with let's say Bubba or 12 tribe or this or that that had broken off of what off of the Rastafari movement the Rastafari frequency, the king of kings of Ethiopia and all those things, that's where this came from. Mm -hmm. So when that is then changed, where now the man who is talking about the man is now being the, the one to be sight up and the one who is being given power and glory, then something is not right about that. So that's like a, a coup. So for me... It's like this, Rastafari Selassie did every single thing. He was priest, prophet, and king. These other men now who, you know, the on Jamaica side, or, you know, got fancy talk and, you know, can talk to people who at that time were in the state of, you know, death, mental death. And so some who have more education could read some books and have some some books and some things that they could read that others are not you know, privy to. They can lead and guide people in, into anything they want to lead and guide them into, you see. And that has been seen all over the world. So when the man got to tell me, he said, Prince Emmanuel set up Baba Shanti and did this and did that. Alice Lassie is done all of that already. So for I and I not to just use his majesty's footprint to do the work, I and I not walking in the king's footprint, we are walking uh, in a God, prophet God, um, Emmanuel, where we are walking uh, our kind of footprint. But we're not walking in Haile Selassie's footprint. And that's the problem with being a Rastafari today with all these split up groups. That's why when I first came on your show, I told you my mission was to create the Rastafari Union. That unity of Rastafari under the name Rastafari and nothing else. And so what happened was I found out there was the Rastafari Union in the U.S. So when I call that brother, that brother already been registered, that everything set up a certain way. Why would I want to reinvent the wheel at that time? So I let the brother not work with him. You understand? So that's how we work in, in, in tandem with each other. We don't try to juxtapose and fight. No, I have a union already. You no. Mm. The brother thing is ahead of yours. You take the baton with him, and you right, know he right. allow you that's some right. more strength. Yeah, that's right. So that's, right. that's how I was looking at the whole situation, my brother. As far as even Bubba, that is what well, I say. You know, rise on, which really is Rastafari at the beginning at what we're saying, and it's about our sovereignty and indigenous. It's talking about the Rastafari nation, sovereign indigenous movement and rights the, the, the name alone just says what it's talking about you know mm -hmm. but what i'm saying is when we say we're bubble shanti and then we have to explain the ones that we're bubble shanti and someone says what's the difference between you and naya being and then of naya bingi what is a naya bingi and then it's about death the white and white black and white oppressors and you know these things are all separation right and I and I is Rastafari at the end of the day. There is nothing that Emmanuel said that is necessary for I and I to use. 
nothing anyone else has said that is necessary for I and I to use if His Majesty already gave us those blueprints. If it was a lack and missing, then we could fill it in. But these brethren took what His Majesty already had and created their own kind of cliques and that is what is the problem so ethiopian world Federation is there and they knew that they all could have taken chapters and did what they needed to do with it but they created their own thing in the sense and, and then you have this problem so i and i have been saying to ones if i and i don't use what his majesty set up i and i to use we always gonna get login it's just that simple and so now we see ones coming together, trying to talk about the EWF and so forth. Well, fine, you know, but that don't mean you come hog your way in because now you've been so disobedient outside for so long and that people who have been disobedient been trying to keep the house clean. Come now with your power and your, your gang and want to come take it over. We ain't having it either. So we know all that is getting ready to happen and this whole conflict of being the one who want to run you. First, you want to run the Ross of Prime movement. That now work. Now you want to come run the EWF and all these things. So we know the Constitution is what we move by with EWF. And I make no man power take over our things. So we have a lot of issues with every organization that's set up because you always a man will want feel like him can do it better than what Ali Selassie said. And he want to add a little letter to the EWF. Well, make it EWF number one, or a, you know, our imperial Ethiopian work. So we have all that going on, but the one, the work, the work is what judges what goes on. A so, lot of people they spend their time in chaos and bickering because mm -hmm. that's their job to distract the real movement. So the works are gonna show up. The, who are plant the food and are not chat but plant food. That's a difference. So. It's the works. What were you saying, brother? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I hear, I hear the eye. So, um, so basically, yeah, what, the, what the ayah said, with, with, with the EWF, where His Majesty said, that should, be the, that should have been the only organization. That is what I get from the eye. Am I correct? Well, I'm looking at the fact that if I and I say we are going to work with the king, and the king say, all right, am I going to send certain things? Where the hell are you going? Where the hell are you going? And we're still in a hell because of it. The king and us reason, and the king said, look, I'm going to send the things that I'm going to help when I a vehicle for drive out of this thing. Mm -hmm. And then I take all kind of different vehicles, and I come to about the king and I follow, and I call up every other man name, and then I get to the boundary line, and I say, the king, I say, we, who, who, who send you know? Manuel I, Marcus I, <laughs> you know, and then I listen to the I at the end of the day. No, Why no, is no, it no. that man I listen to the I mean, I say, you know, yeah. I, most of the time I got me here, you know, so no, I'm but, just saying overall, man. As, as, yeah. as a bubble still, because, you know, I, I is, a, is, is a member of the Congress, you see me, and it's not so, you know, in all honesty. Probably if it appears like that, it's because of ones and ones who probably don't know the fullness of, of the order. But we don't put King Emmanuel or Prince Emmanuel before Eilis Selassie I the first. No time at all. Well, no one I do that. My brother, I just uh, I, I don't want to cut you know, but we've been on the hour. And I don't know how long the eye show is, but I can tell you that I had to even come on the eye inbox and burn out certain things. Because I heard, man, coming on your show with that old concept about Eilis Selassie is the, is the child or the son. And Emmanuel is the father and all kind of little mythological, you know, things that them come push up on people now. You know, about Eilis Selassie is this and Emmanuel is that. Brethren, you know, we can't be having none of that nonsense. These things is foolishness. Eilis Selassie is king of kings, lord of lords, conquering land of the tribe of Judah. He did all the works from the UN to the, 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 he did it all. He took them people on. Where was the ones in the war? Where were they? Where were these ones we given all this power and now? Where were they? You know, his majesty dealt with the, all of that on his own. Emmanuel wasn't there dealing with the nations and all the stuff that was going on. You, Emmanuel wasn't fighting Italy. So, uh, you know, where was Emmanuel then? Where was, where was Prophet Gad then? So 
people we want come take away the king's glory and give it to other man right now and I say like are these people and are them people yeah, organization no I listen last year I set the thing and him say yo the Ethiopian World Federation is for all the black peoples of the world even as Rastafari we should have unified behind that and been supportive of that where why we not support? look at Ali Selassie's school in Jamaica Rasta must get behind that and support and his majesty said that there it's a man says so if we don't support the thing that they left how are we gonna make we're gonna step forward into the future we will our foundation is weak because people are gonna look back and say so I'm to the EWF for the king when he said oh no support that and that was our way out you know in in, in the first place you know much things we can do under the Ethiopian World Federation? That's why the Moors, like I said, is so powerful. They have, there's a federation of many different tribes that come together as the Moors. That's why they're so powerful. The Maroons have similar federation where they all over the world, the Maroon. Rasta is the same way, but like I said, there was a missing stepping in and, and filling that gap of sovereign indigenous and moving towards that from identification to everything else, land to projects to actual institutions, that, that's what's missing. And that's what the Rastafari movement got to step up on. You know, Mother Tabo development, but when you check out them development, them have girls wrong them, them poolside, I shake them back and I learn how to do twerking. Eh? And that's a Rastafari development. I not call the name, because I know exactly who they talk about. I'm going to celebrate that. And I go on like that, that's something I'm for proud of. Like that is representative of what the behavior is, His Majesty and Her Majesty. We are twerking and going in a in a establishment, uh, in a the earth, and in you, you have a, a twerking guide or, or whatever tutor or shit. The, the white girl them ask for them and I make them learn how to twerk. In a your Rastafari setting, we are claiming this I got represent, and you have this and that. Look, brothers and sisters, I look at the world from a different perspective, you know. I look at the world as a as a, a thing illusion and ionize the reality will come so i don't, I, like, I don't expect say, the ones who are living at the illusion for grasp where reality is you know but i know that the future is not far out there so the future is right now so why i say i just manifest brother that i look on you know yeah yeah my brother and yes, sir. it's pure love <laughs> it's pure love and yes sir. Love w- the moment for the reason i love when the eye yes, come on the program my lord you see me i said because as me show you you know we're not partial you know you see we're not partial and me now go me now go stop the eye from saying the writing you know what i mean the eye said the writing so the eye free for flow you understand but um I know that is the love for I and I brothers and sisters within Rastafari why the eye is saying these things and why the eye is a part of certain and certain um, organization you know what I mean to make I and I come together as one and I, I, I know that is the eye mission you see me I say and I could never oppose yeah. or, or fight that you see me I say because it's the same mission that I man is on you see it. So, you know, we, 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 we give thanks to you every time, my brother, and what the eye is doing. So let's say I know. I now have no objective or objection, you know what I mean, towards what the eye says still. You see it. But um, it is imperative that we come together, you see me, I say, all the mansion, all the houses, you see me, I say, and um, the fire for burning enough for the purification, you know, because you see, if the fire don't burn, One's not going to know themselves and not going to see what them are going wrong. You see me? I say, so when certain road sound go out there and it come in like a double-edged sword, a cut through, I just saw. You see me? I say, I just saw and who for hear will hear and who for change will change. <laughs> you see it? And start to do I, um, the writing. You see? But we don't want to stray from the point. We're there a little um, minute still. And a pinnacle we are talking about um, currently. Um, yes, the er- heritage so once site. again, glad to update the family. Once again, glad to update the family that the pinnacle issue has basically, you know, come to a, a point where we can say there's a victory in the moving forward. Where we have seen that and gotten clarification of it in a heritage site of Rastafari. And um, several lots have been designated. 
um, and will be so declared and so forth. So we give thanks to the family for all the ones who have been struggling to make the nickel that and that we know that when one say um, stakeholders and where Rastafari's power will be in all of this, where Rastafari make a decision to be in this. Because enough time, even like with the ganja thing, if those who were up front in the ganja thing were strong, and we're working with what even man like Dawit said, pardon I, I Congo said it, you know, let us work this ganja thing from the indigenous sovereign stance and not from tourist tourism link up with this and that stance and because you know hoteliers and people and you want to be sure with, 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 with high times and you have these little contracts where people are calling you and I tell you about coming together to this and that. And you forgot about the collective. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the ones who are up front dealing with the ganja is dealing with it from a collectivity process for ganja, for Rasta, to benefit based on what Rasta's work and, and suffering has been for that herb. We would be far ahead. Ask a Rasta in Jamaica right now where we are in the ganja industry. They like, what? Ganja who? Which part of that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm. saying so well, how would that happen by the spotlight rosters and those that were put up front to say they were representing i and i and in the end i and i still here waiting to hear so man so i and i burn out all of those who didn't you know them get them chance to play and every time them play for i and i team we lose so i'm not, not putting them on the next explain so them can sit down on the bench and and give advice from the bench yeah but i and i it's time for a new team who will see have the ability for Sell out some boy and move to the goal. Mm -hmm. Listen, we're there right now. Yeah, we're not kick with nobody. We're not disrespect no one. But every game, the coach must recognize the weakness in players and the strength in players to win a game. True. And too much time we are lose. We are here, the same name, them same name, them and what? Be a loser. Time for something, you know, just something feel yeah, like this. Well, I change the team too. But I bring off a man, them with up on the bench. When I have to bring in them man up on the bench, staff to see if them can. <laughs> you see me, sir? Yeah, because that's if, enough if, time. My friendship make the man them on the bench, them original man that will sit down. And because the man them we can't really play, you know, have a, a friendship, them come on the team with, you know, mm. a man put them on because the man know them and know, say boom, boom, but at the same time. The man that was young that are real players. So at them you need to get to get another game. Yeah man. Yeah man, for real. Yes I. I saw it forgot cause you know I I, I I for one have been a part of um, a festival, you know, for a couple of years still and you know, through the COVID and thing things kinda of break down. You know what I mean? The Stepping Eye Ganja Festival, you know, I've I've been on that for uh, I think about four four to three years. You see, and there, there, yes, there be a in the grill. Step yeah, in <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I'm I'm one of the one of the, the, the one of the key players in the first the first a uh, couple of years of that. Also, man, I've been around those ones, Lyndon and you know his wife Ruffles and these ones from yeah. the outset. So what happens is that that's what makes a person like me considered to be necessary or vital in arbitration is because for some reason, the ancestors have taken me among so many different ones that once one a call out and can't say, yes, this man integrity is clean. Mm -hmm. Put him in there and make him bring balance because he's not going to take sides, you see? And that's the only thing a man can really have in integrity in a brother. As him own, a time wealth forever for him, people them will come People can't say that man, you're not bound to sell out, you know? True, yeah. true, 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 honorable. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. So we give thanks, brethren, for the moment to be able to share with the family, brethren. It's a, it's a joy. And I just wanted once, uh, you know, I want to pick up again the Empress Catherine Howell. She stuck it out and kept the fight going. Yeah, man. Even through her trial, she's still chatting, you know, to make this thing here seal up and, 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 and move forward. All it for the world to see what Rastafari, you know, had brought to the world as a heritage and so forth. So we give thanks, my brother, you know, and we move forward one step at a time. Um, as far as leaving the islands, as we had discussed, I and I is dealing with, you know, the whole world is Africa, divided in continents and states, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, yeah. sir. So we build bridges, you know, we build bridges. We're not getting up. Remember, so the, remember so the islands is the spice basket, you know. Mm -hmm. So when I run with them, our spice basket and medicine, basically, you know, and our holistic healing, these spice and herbs, you know, we're going to leave these places for who? For who? No, brother. No, brother. We have to keep the ship them coming from here so straight into Africa or whatever they call Africa. You see me? If we go and bring our medicine and we're healing our spices out of these islands, I feel we place, brother. I must say Pangea in a Gaia in a the planet was one, melanated people in a the separation and continental drift on these things. We have to know about these things and know say a one planet and it was ours. And Ethiopia what we know today, the little little piece of thing that was in Ethiopia yesterday. Yeah true. man. So true, true. <laughs> we 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 buy it, we're big. That's why you see them come and claim the sixth region now, saying that mm. this region, these islands are part of the OAU. You see me? Mm. Yeah, man. True, true. Anyway, my brother, yeah, man. love and honor every time every and time. give thanks for being on the I program once more, our show, to go ahead and reason with the family and bring some clarity in a way forward with with, with impartiality, you know? Yeah, we're yes, impartial in other thing. And that's where His Majesty was. Whether it's religion or any other thing, I'm impartial, you know? And that is my art. Yeah, so one love again, my brother. And Sankofa, every time, yeah? My Lord, Majesty. Yeah, man, give thanks. Yes, Aya sir. Congo, I. Manners and respect and peace and love. And you don't know, sir, the platform, yeah? You can always forward, anytime. <laughs> give thanks. Yes. I, I, give thanks, my brother. Yes, give you and I journey every time. You don't know. Yeah, man. Skillful guidance, my lad. Peace and love. Rastafari. Rastafari. Aye, aye. Yes, honorable family. Yeah, man. All right. That's how we're going to leave it. You know what I mean? Um, give thanks to the I them patient listening and rapid attention. Yeah, man. Give thanks to Aya Congo Aya and, you know, the great works that he's doing out there and, you know, everything regarding Rastafari. So, yeah, man, give thanks. The item can um, reason with us in you know, the comment section and you know, let me know your views and thoughts and what's been said here. So, manners and respect, peace and love. Rastafari. See you on the next video. I just start the mindset. Smash that subscribe button. See you on the next video. I just start the mindset.